Hi, I'm Jennifer Lang, Director of Digital News and Audience Engagement at WFAE. Welcome to the final day of the Charlotte Podcast Festival pop-up. You're here to learn, so we want you to ask questions. Put those questions in the Q&A in Zoom. That's the Q&A you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, and feel free to introduce yourself and talk with the other guests in the chat. Just a reminder, WFAE's ability to bring you these free festival sessions comes from listener support. You can give online at WFAE.org, via Venmo at WFAE Radio, and you can even donate cryptocurrency by searching WFAE at The Giving Block. Um, so if you're so inclined, we appreciate those donations. A big thank you to our sponsor, Ortho Carolina and WFAE partners in the festival, Blumenthal Performing Arts Center, Eclex Creative Agency, and Queen City Net Podcast Network. Now, I'm pleased to introduce our host for this session, Matt Olin. Host of Creative Mornings Charlotte, Matt is co-founder of Charlotte is Creative um, and does all kinds of creative stuff around town. Matt, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's uh, uh, an honor to be here helping to moderate this session. As Jennifer said, I'm Matt Olin, the co-founder of Charlotte is Creative, host of Creative Morning Charlotte, and I am thrilled to serve as your moderator for this session called How to Leverage Podcasting to Build a Six-Figure Business and a seven-figure net worth with none other than Bernadette Joy. Now, Bernadette is a nationally recognized money expert. She's been featured on tons of shows, right? Good Morning America, NBC News. She's been in USA Today and other publications. Why is that, you may ask? Well, first of all, her and her husband were $300,000 in debt, and they had it all paid off within three years, right? And they built their first $1 million in their 30s. And as impressive and inspiring as that is, her star is actually rising because her genius really shines at the intersection of net worth and self-worth. And that is an intersection where many of us, if not all of us, get stopped at some point. So now she's on a mission. She's building a community of people who are ready to really crush their money goals. She does that through her Crush Your Money Goals Academy, through her podcast, Dear Bernadette Joy, which boasts over 16,000 downloads and is a part of the Queen City Podcast Network. And in today's session, she's going to show us how you can make podcasting work for you, no matter your budget. She's going to get into kickstarting your podcast budget, crushing your money goals, and reaching your podcast money goals even quicker. <clears throat> I see no reason to wait. So let's dive in with Bernadette. Hey, Bernadette, how are you doing today? Hello. Thank you so much. That was a great intro. I am so happy that you're here with me, Matt. And um, Matt is a wealth of information as well. So you guys get the, the, the ability to ask both of us questions and anything that you want to talk about today. And I am here to talk about my personal story of uh, moving from podcasting into a broader business based around my passion, which is crushing your money goals, and hopefully sharing with you some tips that will help you figure out how you can do this podcasting thing and make some money. <laughs> That's what we're here to talk about. So I thought the first thing that would be good to show you is, is, is what uh, the title of this um session true and yes it is true so here are actual screenshots of what my business revenue looked like since i've launched crush your money goals so you can see that right here and um if you follow me on social media whoop, whoop, here <laughs> on instagram i post daily tips on um, money tips and inspiration but i also share full transparency, what my own finances look like, especially for people like we, me, women of color who don't see a lot of representation in the personal finance space. It is really important for me, for you to know that it is possible. And I share all of those details on my social media. So this is the actual snapshot of what our net worth looked like in November. And if you want to learn more about that, you can definitely learn with me at crushyourmoneygoals.com. But today, we are part of the Charlotte podcast community. And what are we talking about here? We are talking about podcasting. And what a lot of people on my Instagram account don't know is that I actually started all of this with a podcast. And I would love to tell you that I had this big grand idea on, you know, podcasting and um, making it, you know, this like big, huge brand. 
The truth is, guys, the reason I started a podcast, this is a true story, was that when I started posting on social media how I paid off $72,000 of student loans in less than a year, I got so many people in my DMs. By the way, people who I thought were like doing, like killing it at the money game, secretly messaging me and saying, oh my God, wait, I have student loan debt. I am struggling with this. Like, how are you doing this? And I, you know, was sharing my story. I was happy to do it. But after a couple dozen, I was like, there's got to be a more efficient way to do this. And so my husband, I, I was talking to my husband one day and I said, it would be so cool if I could just record a link and then send it to people. And then I don't have to like repeat myself all the time. He was like, you know, that's called a podcast, right? So boom, here we are. Four seasons later, I have recorded dozens of episodes. Brian, who's actually helping us out here on the tech side, he is a, the producer and was so kind to have, to have me join the Queen City Podcast Network. And it has been such a joy to be able to do this podcasting journey, especially when I get to meet other podcasters like you. And so hopefully this gives you some inspiration to say, hey, maybe this could actually be a thing. So... <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk about how you actually can grow your worth through podcasting. And conveniently, it follows the five steps, the same five steps that I teach in my Crush Your Money Goals Academy. But we're going to look at it through the lens of how this fits into your overall podcasting strategy. So here are the five steps. If you want to take a snapshot of this now, go ahead, screenshot this ish, keep it. <laughs> One of my clients puts it on her refrigerator and looks at it every day. And these five steps, whether it's podcasting or any other money goal, will totally help you clarify what it is that you want to do with your podcast or any you know, financial goal that you have in the future. So first step, we're gonna talk about clearing the mental clutter. Then we're gonna talk about reversing into one goal. Then I'm gonna talk about how you can use your assets and stop making more work for yourself. Then I'm going to talk about my favorite talk, topic, which is spending shamelessly. I love spending money. Contrary to popular belief, I am, here's another fun fact, guys. I'm completely debt-free and I love spending money. Who would have thought that was possible, right? And then the last step, hustle smart, not hard. And how can you take podcasting and make it something that can help your brand without having to do all the work? So we're going to get right to it. I am going to zip through this presentation and then we're going to leave plenty of time at the end for questions. All right. So first things first, clear the mental clutter. Now, I don't know about you guys and you can drop it in the chat. Did anyone else feel like they had imposter syndrome when they decided to start this podcast? Like if you did like little emoji hand or like in the chat say, that was me. Uh, yeah, me big time. I was like, who's going to listen to this thing? And like I told you before, the main reason that I started the podcast was so that I could send it to a handful of people. I did not think that there would be 16,000 uh, downloads later on. Right. So clearing the mental clutter is the first step in any money goal. And specifically, I want you to think about, and in the chat, be, let's be real here. Uh, I'm going to give you a uh, quick view into my Crush Your Money Goals Academy. The way that I teach all my classes is like, we got Vegas rules, like no shaming, no guilting, like what's said in the room stays in the room, right? So in the chat, let us know, why did you start your podcast? Why did you start your podcast? Was it for business or was it for a hobby? And Matt, do you mind sharing me? Is there, is there anything interesting going on in the comments? Oh, you're muted. Definitely people chime, chiming in about imposter syndrome. I think we can all relate to that. Um, but it looks like a combination of Bahabi and business. Um, a couple of, one person said business. I see a few people say hobby. So it's actually uh, leaning more toward hobby in the chat anyway. Ah, yes. Okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you guys. I, um, I love the podcasting platform because it is a fun place to be and there's so much cool, interesting information being shared. And, you know, some of you, like maybe you mentioned that you want to keep your audio skills sharp or that you just did it for fun. Now, here's the truth, though. If you actually want to make money with a podcast, just like any other product, you have to start thinking and treating it like a business. And so one simple thing that I want to give you as a rule 
is that even just how you speak about your podcast makes such a big difference in getting over that imposter syndrome and really, you know, treating this as though it's something that's going to help you build revenue. So one small thing that I want you to change starting today, if you are someone who's interested in making money with this, is that a hobby, we're going to call all those things that you spend your money on expenses, because expenses are just things that are required in order to make something work, right? It's the money you spend on something. But if you are someone who's like, oh, I want to make revenue out of this, then we're going to start calling all these things investments. And there is a di there's a big difference in the mindset that you have when you're thinking something is an expense versus something that is an investment. And the investment is really the action or process of spending money in the expectation that you will get, get a result back. Now, by the way, it is totally cool if you're still doing this as a hobby. I'm not saying that you, everyone should have a business podcast. But what I'm saying is that a lot of times, and I'm calling myself out on this, guys, a lot of times I'll say, oh, I'm just doing this for fun. I'm just doing this as a hobby just because like, I don't want to put that pressure on myself to, to say, oh, if I didn't make any money that I failed at it. But as soon as I turn my brain on to say, you know what, I'm making an investment in this, then the way that I treated the expenses and the way that I treated how I built content was a lot different than if I was just doing it for fun. <clears throat> so that goes into the R in crush, which is reversing into one goal. The biggest mistake that I see my clients make, whether it's podcasting or otherwise, is people are trying to do too many things at the same time. And that's why they don't feel like they can make a lot, a lot of progress. So you can imagine the kind of things that people come to me when we talk about money, they're like, Bernadette, I have debt to pay off, but I also have, you know, student loans and I also want to buy a house and I want to save money and I want to retire and I want to send my kids to college. Like I am so overwhelmed and rightfully so because it, because it, it is really overwhelming to think about all those things. So I, another fun fact, happen to be a psychology major while also having a business degree. And one of the things that I learned in my, the, the one thing that I learned that was really helpful in psychology was that we as human beings, we suck at multitasking. It's just a fact. That is the, our brain is not meant to multitask. It is made, it's made, meant to process one thing at a time. So when I talk about doing any sort of strategy around a business venture or around your personal finance, I always tell my clients, let's focus on one goal at a time and really focus on that goal. So what is your main goal in your podcast? And there's three ways that you can think about this if you're looking at it, looking at it from a money perspective. One is as the product itself, right? As in, all right, I am just going to try to get sponsors or other people to pay me to do this podcast. And the podcast itself is what is gonna generate the money, right? Or could it be as a channel to build your brand awareness, right? So that maybe you're not getting sponsors, maybe you're not getting people to pay you to be on the, to, to produce a show, but you're using it as a channel to have people understand who you are, what you do, what your personal philosophy is, and why your content is unique and different and interesting to listen to. The last piece could be as a lead magnet into your other business, right? So for me, my actual main focus as a business is Crush Your Money Goals Academy, right? I teach women how to build wealth, right? But as a lead magnet, a podcast is a great thing because it gives you people an opportunity to really get a flavor of who I am, what my personal like uh, way of teaching finance is, and simply that whole idea of no like, and trust, right? It's different when you get an email from someone or a social media post versus actually hearing that person's voice, which is so unique to podcasting. And I would say even better sometimes than even like a YouTube channel or putting up reels, right? Because there's so much sensory stuff going on when you're watching video, but podcasting has this really unique ability to connect with people by just listening to your voice, right? So what is your main goal? And that is one of the things that I want you to write down if you have a pen and paper handy. I would suggest, what is the one thing that you want to do with your podcast um, as a main goal? Is it to be the product itself? Is it to be a channel to build brand awareness around your overall brand? Or is it a direct lead magnet into your full-time business? 
And let me share with you an example here. So for me, right, I decided in the, and by the way, it can totally change. You can have one and then move into the other or the next one, but start off with one and stick with it until you have conquered that space. So in the beginning, true story, I uh, decided that it was going to be the product itself because I had no other media assets at the time. At the time, I was just an, I was just a girl on Instagram just posting about student loan debt. Like I had nothing going on, right? So the podcast, the initial way that I had started making money on it was other businesses were paying me to come and be on the podcast, right? But I didn't, I decided I didn't like that model because then it started straying away from really what I wanted to talk about, which was, you know, how people in real life pay off debt, build wealth, and the struggles around the psychology part of the finances, right? So over time, I went through those three goals and I used it as a um, as a way to build brand awareness. And then eventually it, what it is now is it is a great lead magnet for my business in the sense of even something as simple when someone asks me, well, I'm not sure if I want to, you know, join your crush and money goals Academy. The first thing I do is like, well, why don't, you know what, go check out my podcast, listen to this particular episode based on the thing that you told me was a challenge for you. And then let me know what you think after you heard the podcast. And in a great way, I've been able to convert people into joining my Crushing Money Goals Academy because they heard the podcast and they're like, oh, okay, like if this is how she sounds like on the podcast, maybe it'd be really cool to take a class with her, right? So here's an example where I took that podcast and I was able to leverage that podcast to build other brand building opportunities just by simply telling people I was a podcaster. That's another fun fact a lot of people don't know. Media is always looking for new content and fresh faces to be able to bring to their shows. So I kid you not, the first um, way that I was able to get on television was to let them know that I was the host of a podcast. I didn't even have that many listeners <laughs> at that time, but they said, wow, well, you have a podcast, so you're not just, you know, some random person that, that is, um, you know, that just paid off a debt, like you're actually validated, that is your credential, right? So when I shared that as a podcaster, I was able to land a television segment on WNC Charlotte, which then led me to go to national press with um, CNBC. And it all started with the podcast. So that leads me into the you in Crush, which is using your assets, right? So one of the things that I love about podcasting is because you can then take the same content that you've had in podcasting and not have to reinvent the wheel and be able to leverage those assets into other forms of media. And we all have to get over the, I have to make something new every moment of every day, right? Uh, how many of you guys have seen, okay, let me, I'll, I'll tell you um, something that happened to me recently. So I just came back from the BTS concert in LA. This is why my voice is a little bit hoarse today because I was screaming all, all week. And they are, they are spokespeople for Samsung and Hyundai, right? Do you know how many times I have seen a Samsung or Hyundai commercial with BTS? And do I care? No, I'm actually happy <laughs> to see those commercials because I get to see BTS again, even if it's a 30 second commercial, they're trying to sell me a phone, right? And yet a lot of content creators are like, oh, I have to create something new. I have to like have a new episode every single time. And really you have so much content. If you've built a podcast, even if you only have a couple episodes, you can take that same content and then put it into other forms of media that can help you leverage your overall brand. So here is a fun example, right? Um, I write as a contributor to uh, Time Magazine as uh, one of their channels is called Next Advisor, which is specifically for personal finance and primarily geared towards like millennials, like a lot of the like we're anti avocado toast kind of people. Right. And uh, I wrote an article that was called I went against everyone's advice and stopped investing to pay off debt and I would do it again. And the crux of that article was in the personal finance space, there's a lot of people who are saying, no, 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 you shouldn't wait to pay down your debt before you start investing. You need to start investing right away. And, and the week before I submitted this article, another personal finance expert had, had written basically the opposite of what I wrote, saying like, you should not be waiting to pay off debt. You should be investing first. And the editor said, like, I don't know if we can publish this article. It's contradictory to what we just posted last week. And I said, well, hey, read the article, 
and then let me know what you think. He didn't respond to me for like three weeks. And I was like, oh no, I really effed this up. <laughs> I, I don't know what I did wrong here. And he came back to me three weeks later and he said, you know what, Bernadette, I, um, it was one of the best articles I've seen. And it made me, it, it was, he was like, it was logically sound. I could not debate it. I could not argue with you in the, in the content of the article. And it made me realize that there are multiple perspectives. There is more than one way to get at the same goals. Right. So you reminded me of that. And I really appreciate that you did that. That gave me a light bulb moment to say, wait a minute. Had he not read this article, he would have thought that this was not valuable. And so I'm so glad that I was able to post that article. I took that same article and turned it into a podcast episode. Right. Which now it turned out to be one of my most popular podcast episodes because it sounds different when people hear it. And here's a funny story. Someone reached out to me and said, who I know, who's a good friend of mine. And they're, they're like, that podcast episode was so good. I really like felt differently about what you're, how you were saying it. And it made me think I should be doing something different. And I said, hey, do you not realize that that's the same article that I wrote for time like a couple weeks ago? And they're like, I read that article. I did not realize it was the same thing, right? So it goes to show you that just because someone sees information doesn't mean that they necessarily remembered it. Or maybe that person like just learns better when they hear versus when they read something, right? So being able to take the same content and put it in multiple media platforms not only helps build your brand awareness, but it helps your audience hear your message in all the different ways that is suitable for them. Um, and then I took that same article and it went all over TV, <laughs> that same thing, right? So, oh, look, here's, look at this picture, guys. That's Mario Lopez. Isn't he adorable? He's taking off his shirt, like true story. You should watch that <laughs> that episode. It was a really fun time. So, you know, when I say you should do all this stuff, it sounds like a lot of work. And you know why? Because it is, <laughs> it is a lot of work. If you try to do this all by yourself, you will get burned out. So my S in crush stands for spend shamelessly. And when I say spend shamelessly, I am trying to remove the guilt or fear of spending money on your podcast, because if you are truly treating it as a business, the way that you spend your money should have a return on investment should mean that money is coming back to you. And if you intend to make money with your podcast, then you do need a budget because every business has a budget, right? So if you're one of those folks is like, well, I'm going to record all my stuff myself and I'm going to do all my, my social media posting and I'm going to do all the post-production and, and, you know, the mic and everything like that. Great. But could you get there faster and could you do it with more finesse and expertise if you actually hire and get the right help that you need, right? So here are the investments that I personally made into my podcast that I thought was super worth it, that actually created a result, a return on the investment that I made, right? So the simple ones, Canva, um, this is how I made the presentation. I think a lot of people know Canva already, but Canva, it's like 10 bucks a month. Just do it. Make your podcast art on it. Make your post, like just use Canva. It's so much easier, right? Kajabi is actually the platform that I use to um, uh, run all of my courses. And it, it's also the same platform I use for all my marketing. And they just released a new feature of being able to also add your podcasts there as well. And so for me, it's become a really great all-in-one platform to run my business. And a lot of people, again, will look at it and be like, oh, that feels pricey. Because I think it's like, it's like $2,000 a year, which sounds like a lot of money. But if you break it down to about $200 a month, if I'm going to make at least $200 a month from what I'm producing this podcast, and it's an investment, right? And it has made my life so much easier by then also being able to put a cross section between my podcast audience and the people who are um, joining my programs. Then there is, of course, podcast production. Total shameless plug for Queen City Podcast Network and Brian here. They are freaking awesome. I don't know... I know zilch about podcast production. I just want to let you know, I have never produced a single podcast episode on my own because I have zero interest in being able to figure that out. And I've never, I've never edited a single podcast episode, right? 
So when people say, when people tell me, they're like, how are you turning out these like episodes so quickly and stuff? I'm just like, cause I'm not the one, to, I'm not the one doing it. Um, so podcast production, there are plenty of amazing um, people, two of them that I know personally, Brian here, and then Andy Go, who's also a presenter here for Charlotte Pat Podcast Network are amazing people to work with and totally worth the money. Um, photography and video, um, just taking uh, pictures um, and getting some video footage of some of your podcast episodes can go a long way in terms of your building your brand awareness, being able to make you know Facebook ads and being able to put um, accompanying episodes on YouTube. So um, as an example, I was just talking about this with Brian earlier, two years ago, we before COVID, right, as part of the Charlotte Shout, which was, you know, what the Charlotte Podcast Festival was under, we had done like a live recording session of a, like a live podcast episode um, in Uptown Charlotte. And so I asked my video editor to come and videotape us while we were recording that podcast episode. And it had a really cool background because it looked very urban and all that stuff. And I have consistently used that same content even till today over and over again um, on my Instagram, on my YouTube channel. And so it was like extra impact from the same podcast episode with having the video accompanying to it. And then um, there is public relations. That can probably be a, an entire topic on its own. But in um, the past, I've hired people in the PR space to also help me on landing some major you know, television and press. So when I first launched the Crush, uh, it was called Crush the Set at the time, um, the podcast, I had a PR person create a press release for me on my podcast launching. And that was what was able to help me land a TV segment locally in Charlotte. And then the last piece, which totally self-serving, let's be real here, coaching, right? So if you are someone who is like still figuring out the imposter syndrome, figuring out how to do this, you don't have to do it alone. Whether it's me or anybody else, finding someone who's been there, done that with what you're trying to do in your business or in your podcast. I know a couple of podcast coaches. Uh, one of my uh, good friends is Colleen, Colleen Odegaard, who used to be the host on WCNC Charlotte. She does media coaching for people, right? So she will like help you sound better on your podcast. And you know why she's a great coach for that? Because this year she won best podcast. <laughs> in Charlotte with her own podcast, right? So who better to learn from? Um, so whether it is the business side of this or the actual production of doing your podcast, I highly, highly recommend that you get someone who to help you in that space because it is an investment that is well worthwhile. All right. So we talked about C-R-U-S and we're on the last part of CRUSH, which is hustle smart, not hard. And here is the... The tip that is kind of the antithesis to all of this, if this felt like a lot, you don't necessarily have to build your own podcast. You can use other people's platforms who are more than happy to share it with you. And when I say that, like in hindsight, I kind of wish that's what I did in the beginning, although I love my podcast now, but there are so many people who are looking for guests and looking for creative ideas and new content that if you're like, I don't want to deal with production, I don't want to deal with like having to advertise, I'm still struggling with imposter syndrome, then you can go out to other podcasts and say, hey, I'm an expert on X, Y, and Z, and I'd love to be a guest on your podcast, right? That is a totally viable way to do this. And it is super effective. So just in the past year, here are three examples of podcasts that I have been a guest on. Right. And I actually took a break from um, from creating new content for my own podcast because I had so many podcast guest interviews that I had enough content to you know continue to build brand awareness. So Girl Behind the Hustle, by the way, I'm like such a huge fan of all of these people. Girl Behind the Hustle, amazing Instagram community here. But uh, she really helps uh, other uh, content creators build their businesses. And she asked me to be her on her podcast episode. And we had so much fun doing it. But you can see that she has a way stronger following than I have, right? So she has more people that I probably would never would have reached. And then I saw a material difference. I saw a couple hundred new followers just from being on that podcast episode with her, right? Um, Janice Torres Rodriguez is literally one of my favorite people on the, on the planet. 
Here's the thing that people have a common misconception about. Um, she has Yo Quiero Dinero podcast. She uh, also is a money coach like me. A lot of people would, th would think that we're competitors, like would try to pit us against each other because we're going out after very similar audiences. But instead, we have invited each other on, e on each other's platforms and both of us have grown because of that, right? So I've been on her podcast twice and both times I got, I, I got great new followers and I got a couple of clients who joined me because they listened to her to me on her podcast, right? And then my favorite story, Sherry Lynn, she's local to Charlotte. I was on a panel with her in last year's Charlotte Podcast Festival. And she invited me to come to be on her podcast after being on the panel. I had never met her before. I still haven't met her in person. We've only seen each other on the Zoom thing. But she invited me to be on her podcast. And two of my best clients, my who have become friends of mine, um, they both heard me on Sherry Lynch's podcast and that's how I got started. So if you think that you need to build your own engine, you don't, there's plenty of people who are willing to share their platforms for you with you and who want to spread your message. So in the chat, I would love to hear, because this is how I, how I always end any presentation I have. I want you to leave with action. Right. I want you to commit to something you're going to do differently today. Right. So of all the things that we talked about, what is one thing that you're going to do differently with your podcast today? I would love, love to hear it. And then while you're writing that down, um, I am uh, so excited that I was here. I so appreciate you guys taking the time. If you're interested at all in learning more about Crush Your Money Goals, you can just hit me up at hello at crushyourmoneygoals.com. And for anyone who just lets me know that you're a part of today's, I'm going to be giving you a free 45-day trial. So you basically can come to my classes for free and just like, come hang out. <laughs> and you can learn more about Crush Your Money Goals at crushyourmoneygoals.com. I also have a free starter guide for anybody who signs up on just how you can start. And this is especially great for the end of the year going into 2022. It's the biggest time when people download my, my starter guide. Like they ignore all my emails up until December and they're like, oh wait, January is right around the corner. Let me go check this out. And by the way, in the starter guide, I include um, some of my favorite podcasts to listen to. What's going on in the, in the chat? All right. Um, well, we have, um, Phil says he's going to simplify his offer, his offers. Uh, he thinks he has too much going on and it just cuts on his audience in the smaller and smaller pieces. So mm. a, a more of a focused approach, it sounds like. Oh, that's a good one. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, you've definitely inspired Kat to spend shamelessly on her podcast. So that's another really good one. Kathy says she's going to take it seriously as a business. Um, here's one. Daniel says she's actually going to start one. No more excuses. She's going to start a podcast. Yay! That's <laughs> so amazing. Um, I'll give you a friendly tip here. Last year, I presented at the podcast festival on how to start your podcast. <laughs> so if you want to look it up on YouTube, um, that, that, that presentation from last year is up there. And hopefully that will help you. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Rini says she's going to teach self-editing. Uh, Kate, let's see what Kate says. Uh, the idea of brand awareness and how to utilize it for what she's doing has been a huge lesson for her with the uh, with these Charlotte Podcast Festival sessions. So she'll be mentally chomping on that to get a better understanding of how to move forward. That's I great. It. Oh, that's so great. So um, I'm going to say, you know, the reason I ask people to put these in the chat too, because now you put it into the universe. Somebody has heard you about this is no longer in your head. Um, and don't be surprised if y'all uh, follow me here on, I'm on all, all these different social media platforms. I'd love to connect with you and hear how it goes. And if you tell me that you're in the session, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, so what did you do? <laughs> after the session. So if you want a little accountability, a little tough love here, like come slide into my DMs. <laughs> there is some, there is some power and some magic in, in, in uh, putting something out there in the universe, you know, seeing it out there. That's really, really something. 
Uh, Julie Smith says she's going to break down the podcast episodes into other forms of, of content. As you said, use those assets. Julie, wait, if it's the Julie Smith that I know, did I not know that you're creating a podcast? Uh, we definitely need to discuss. So yes, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Oh, our friend, uh, our friend Fabi Pressler says that she's going to um, publicly pitch her podcast concept in the next session. Oh, yes, at one o'clock, folks, there's a pitch session coming up in about 25 minutes. Uh, uh, so awesome. Fabi is one of my favorite people in Charlotte. If you do not know Fabi, you need to check her out. She is the CEO of Spark Publications, and she helps people write um, their books. And she is on her own journey to become a podcaster. So I am going to be in the next session, like in the fan stands, watching her pitch. I'm very excited for her. That's awesome. Joe says he's going to work toward being a guest on another podcast. And, and this is, we're going to bring a, a question in here. Uh, yeah. He says, do you have any, any tips or leads for a music and radio media expert like, like he uh, to, toward, uh, to, toward becoming a guest on another podcast? Oh, that's a great, okay. So first things first is if you're gonna pitch yourself to another podcast, you want to be able to put your put to, put yourself a little press kit together and you can literally Google like how to put a press kit together. But essentially it's gonna be a couple of nice photos of you, your bio, um, and you want to be very specific as to what you would talk about on the podcast. So this is where you need to do some work for the people because like, podcasters are very creative people. Like we, like, we ain't got time to, <laughs> to like, if, if you give us like too much leeway, we're just going to go like off the walls with it. Right. So you got to keep us focused. So when someone pitches to me, what is most helpful is to say, hi, I'm so-and-so I'm an expert in this area. Here's a link to my bio. Here is an example of where I have spoken before. And I would love to talk about one of the following topics and give them three options. So they have like a menu to choose from, right? So for me, um, I also do large speaking engagements and it's the same thing with podcasting. Whenever I pitch myself to a speaker, um, to like a convention or to a podcasting uh, or to a podcast, I'll say, I'm Bernadette Joy. I am a speaker and the chief educator at Crush Your Money Goals. I paid off $300,000 of debt in three years and built my first million dollars of net worth. And I would love to talk about one of these three topics on your podcast growing your worth, living on your own terms, not your lo loan terms, or crushing the wealth gap. Which of these might be of interest to you? And instead of them being like, oh, like, let me try to figure out what we would talk about. They're like, oh my God, yeah, that works. That's great. You did all the work for me. That is the, that is the thing that you have to keep in mind when you're pitching yourself is you need to make it as easy for them as possible to make a decision. And then the last thing I'm going to give you when you said music, um, I mean, there is a music podcast on WFAE, right? That probably would be the first place I would go. And by the way, I would say that, hi, I'm an, I was an attendee at the Charlotte Podcast Festival. Love the work you're doing, WFAE. Let me be on your podcast. Um, but one other way you can do that is you can go to their podcast and look at the similar po suggested podcasts when you go on Apple iTunes or anything like that. And you'll get, you know, the, the, the podcast that have a similar list, listener's um, profile. That was a very long-winded answer. I hope that was helpful. That's great. No, that was really, really smart advice. And I'm still looking at some of uh, some of the one thing that they're going to do uh, responses that you've asked the attendees to put in here. Clark says that he's going to focus on listener growth in the new year, which brings up a question for me, Bernadette. How, how closely do you watch your, your listener growth numbers? Do you keep a close eye on that or, or not really? I don't, which probably I should, <laughs> but um, I only figured out there was like 16,000 downloads or whatever when Brian told me, <laughs> like, I, I just like didn't even know. And um, what I think is important though, what, what was really cool though, when I looked at, when I finally took a, a look at the stats was I also noticed that there was um, listeners in places that I wouldn't expect, right? So I had listeners in like the UK, and in Asia, and I was like, what is going on here, right? So it made me think about, um, you know, how do I, how do I serve people in those places as well? And maybe, you know, have an episode that's not just US centric, right? Having an episode about what it's like to pay off debt in other countries, as an example. So um, when you look at your listeners, and you look at the viewership, uh, viewership, the listenership, listenership, yeah, that works. Uh, <laughs> is a lot of people get really caught up in the numbers. And for me, it's more about, you know, 
what is what is resonating with people and I will more closely pay attention to the numbers of individual episodes, right? So that's how I know that that episode that I showed you previously about paying debt versus investing was one of the higher ones. And that gave me a clue into what future content yeah. I should have, right? And then there was another episode that I thought was going to kill it and nobody listened to it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that again. So use those numbers as a guide for future content, not as a barometer of if you are successful or not. Yeah, I love that. That's sort of what precipitated my, my question there, because I do think that there is a possible, there's some pitfalls to getting too over obsessed with your listener numbers. But if you can approach it in a healthy way and through that lens of let's let's allow uh, these numbers, whatever they are, however large or small they are, to really just inform my content. Um, that seems like a healthy way to sort of look at those numbers and, and uh, create some context uh, around yeah, that. For yeah. sure. Right. I will, I will, I will, yeah, go ahead, Bernadette. No, I was just going to say, I'll also say like, just, and this is like, goes to any, you know, platform. I'm going to tell you, here's a confession, right? A couple of weeks ago, I took a class on like, on a, like Instagram algorithms. And so then after I took that class, I was like, oh, now I must beat the algorithm. And so I started like trying to finagle all these things with my Instagram to see if it would help boost my following or not. And long story short, it did not. And I, I didn't find it fun anymore. I started getting away from the content that I actually just enjoyed posting, right? And so uh, I had to remind myself that, and sometimes, you know, when I look at this, I'll go back to this slide here, right? I will find, like, I would love to tell you that I am immune to like comparison and like all that stuff. But no, I look at these other people, I'm like, oh my gosh, they all have way more followers, they're way more followers than I do. They're like so much, you know, more, you know, out there, but um, what I have come to find is that if you're staying really uh, true to your voice and specifically in podcasting and you're not trying to do it for the sake of listen, listeners, you're lo- like you will build a loyal following, mm-hmm. right? So for me, I don't have that big of a following, but I have seen the same people comment, post, like come to my events for years now. And uh, in a lot of ways, like I would rather really serve that small niche group of people than like thousands, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, folks, we have another maybe 15 minutes with Bernadette. So take advantage of this time. Send your questions in because clearly the numbers show she knows what she's talking about. And so I'm going to shift over and, and ask a few of the questions uh, that are in the Q&A right now. Okay. And um, Bernadette, maybe maybe you can zip over to that um, slide that shows the different investments that you've made this, the, in, in spending shamelessly, because this next question is rela- related to that. Can you share the costs of some of these investments, especially things like public relations and coaching? Can you give any sort of, uh, you know, ballparks? Uh, of course. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm the person that will tell you all the numbers, right? So Canva, I think, is like $10 a month. Kajabi is like is 200 something a month. But if you pay for the full year, it's $2, you save, I think, a couple hundred dollars. I know I paid $19.97 for, for a full year. Um, podcast production, it really varies. Some people charge by hour. Some people charge by, by project. Um, and so you really have to find out from those individual people, like how they charge it. How I would say though, is on a podcast production is that you do want to have some clarity on what the format is of your podcast. And, you know, if you can help it to chunk it into, you know, doing several episodes at a time, because that will help cut down your costs and production. So for example, if you're going into someone else's studio and they're charging you for studio time, then you can obviously save some money by going there twice and doing like four episodes instead of one episode every single time. Um, Photography and video. So photography, um, there's so many, there's so many great photographers, especially in North Carolina. And I have always chosen to pay a little bit more on photography because it really makes a big difference on just the look and feel of everything. Even if you're a podcast, like just your cover art and having a really good photo makes a big difference. Um, like you can see here, like all of these are, are professional photos. And I've had I've had photos done for, you know, as little as like $400 up to like a thousand, just depending on how like involved that photo shoot was. Video is, um, 
I will give you a great, oh, so photography, let me give you some good recommendations. Photography, Jen Yusan um, is my photographer. She's based here in Asheville, um, but Ebony Stubbs in Charlotte, I highly recommend as well. Video, um, The Animist, Ethan Neville, he is my videographer. He's been doing my video videos for years now, um, but he's come with me to all these events, to the podcast festival when I um, presented last time. And again, it really depends on um, how uh, how much video you intend to um, to record and how much editing you want them to do. So one way you can get around on like, you know, making sure that you can save on cost for that is being very specific on having on what content you want to have. So both for photography and video, I always have like a shot list of like what I want to make sure I capture in that. So we're not wasting time. And especially on video, if you say, I really want like this, these specific things of me, like, so when I was creating my speaker video, I said, you know, I want to make sure I have a, a, a shot of me up, you know, in front of a board. I want to have a shot of me, like talking to a student. I want to have a shot of me, you know, with crush your money goals, like on the background, like I was very specific with what shots I wanted so that they knew exactly what they were looking for and editing took a lot less time. Public relations is, I still don't fully understand public relations. I would love to tell you that I do, but when I first started, you know, I started out with a publicist that was relatively new to the field. And so it was a lot less expensive. It was a couple hundred dollars to get that press release. Now I have a publicist who charges me $3,000 a month. But that's because we're doing a lot of different stuff related to like she's the same person who helped me get on good morning america as an example and then coaching again all dependent um and the way that i operate as um as a coach is i, I give people different options and that's that's what i would recommend for you too is like if you have a coach that only has one way to work with them that's kind of a red flag because not everyone learns the same way or not everyone needs the same amount of, of attention so in the way that I have it, I have, you can come to just group classes. You can come to group classes and you get um, daily access to me via Voxer. If you know the, the, the app Voxer, like people can message me and like leave me voice messages and we'll like converse uh, in real time. And then I have clients who meet with me like face-to-face -face via Zoom, either monthly or weekly and keep them accountable. So I try to have options for people that make sense both with their budgets and what they need to do with their business or their personal goals. And in the media space, I would say specifically for if you're looking for a, a coach on media, it tends to be a beginning, middle and end kind of engagement where you want to have a specific deliverable by the end of that engagement. So if you're saying like, I want to be really, I want to be a really great podcast host, then you need to set that forth with your media coach to say like, but within the next 90 days, I want to learn this, this, and this, and I want to be effectively better in this, in this particular thing so that I can launch my podcast by this date. You want to have a specific deliverable. You don't want to have a coaching engagement that has no ending. Yeah. Well, and while we're on the topic of, of, of costs, um, I'm going to hop around a little bit here, but Danielle asked, um, you know, is there an initial startup cost uh, in terms of invest that she'll be investing in to get her podcast started. And I'm sure that can be a, a, a moving target, but any thoughts about startup costs? Yeah. So at the most basic level, if you're just starting a podcast, like it's, it can be as little as getting a podcast mic. And I would not cheap out on that, like get a decent mic, which is not even that expensive, maybe like a hundred bucks. Um, and the editing software and a subscription to something that you can be able to upload all the podcasts effectively and Canva, right? So we're talking about like a couple hundred bucks. But I think I'm sure you guys have been to other, if you made it to this one, probably I'm going to assume that you went to at least one other um, presentation as part of the podcast festival. I'm sure you've heard the stat kind of over and over again that very few podcasts actually have a very high listenership and all of those podcasts are pretty highly produced, right? So that is where you do get a return on investment. So depending again on how how much you really want to grow this podcast, it is, there is a direct correlation to how much you spend on it. There's very few podcasts or like any media really for that matter that will like completely came out of nowhere, spent no money and then became mm -hmm. like super popular. Right. So, and a lot of the, a lot of the costs in that case is going to be more on marketing. Right. So 
the actual cost of putting together a podcast is not that huge where a lot of the cost comes in and you can see it from my slide here is the stuff related to marketing, right? Photography, video, public relations and coaching. Yeah. And I'm, of course, I'm not a CPA, but I would imagine that some of these costs, especially if you fall into those categories, number two or number three, where you're using your podcast to build brand awareness or, or to as a lead magnet in your business, number one, you could probably write some of those costs off as business expenses, but also, is it okay to approach your, your podcast as a loss leader? I mean, is, is that okay too? Like not really to look at it as a revenue generator, to, to, to treat it as a loss leader. Yeah. So I love that you brought this up. Um, here's a thing that a lot of people don't realize about just starting any sort of business is that you don't actually have to be making money. <laughs> to be claiming it as a business. Now, again, I'm not a CPA. So, you know, like I'm saying it right now, like this is not tax advice, but um, as long as there is evidence that you are attempting to make money, that you're trying, you know, your best <laughs> to try to create revenue, even if you end up taking a loss, you can still write off all those expenses. So everything on this list is uh, a tax write-off for me, mm -hmm. right? Um, and on the point of being a loss leader, right, that is a great example where, yeah, for me currently, like the podcast itself is a quote unquote loss leader in this, in the sense of I've spent money on these things, but the, uh, because it's acting as a lead generator for me, like the money is being uh, made up for on, you know, people joining my programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a few more questions here. So, uh, Kate asks, she says she's new to podcasting, but she hears from a lot of people that her download numbers suggest that she might be ready to start looking for sponsorship revenue soon. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on how to approach sponsors, investors, et cetera, and what information she should be prepared to show them? Um, I would love to tell you that I had more info about that, but um, actually, Matt, do you have any suggestions on that? Well, you know, I will say that uh, when we as a nonprofit, so Tim and I run this, this nonprofit, Charlotte is Creative, and um, when we approach um, corporations for sponsorship dollars, uh, we typically lead with our impact, right? What is the impact that we're making in Charlotte? And how is that impact relevant to their, um, their funding priorities as a company? So mm -hmm. just in the same way that you said, you know, when you approach local press or, or national press, make it easy for them, right? Like, uh, you know, sort of do the hard work by, by saying, here's a great topic or a twist or an angle that I can bring onto your show. Uh, same thing with a potential funder, you know, figure out, do the research, do the, do the homework to figure out what are their funding priorities and then go in and frame your, your pitch in, um, in, in the context of those. Yeah, for sure. So I will tell you this, guys, is that I thought about whether or not I wanted to do sponsored content or not. And I have ultimately strayed away from it personally. And I'm not saying it's a bad choice. It's just for me in the personal finance space, it would force me to produce certain types of content that I was not interested in producing. So as an example, like I was approached by a major credit card company for a lot of money to do sponsored content. And I I, I would be lying if I say I didn't think about it, right? But I ultimately said no because it was in direct contradictory contradiction to what I teach in my in my classes, right? So when this is probably not the answer that you're looking for, but whenever you are approaching for sponsored content or you're looking for sponsors, you really want to find sponsors that really that really understand and believe in not just your brand but what you are saying, <laughs> right? Because truth be told, they saw me, they saw me. On television they're like she's asian and she has a female audience and like that is an audience that we're not like really good at right now like let's go see how much money we can pay her and when i you know when they approached me with what what they wanted me to um you know do commercials for i said i said back to them in a very nice way i said clearly you have not like even listened or heard to a piece of my content because this is directly <laughs> the opposite of what i teach right so one thing I would say is look at their, look at audiences or look at brands that have a similar audience to who you want to reach. And the easiest way for you to decide like who you want to approach is by starting off with the brands that you love first, right? So I even for myself going into next year, because I've been approached by a lot of different um, companies to do sponsor type ads or content. And I have, I have yet to find one that that I uh, wanted to do. And it's probably because they approached me first and they didn't really 
like understand what I was doing, but you don't have to limit it to your, to your immediate space. So for me, as an example, like while I'm in personal finance, I would totally love to be sponsored by Aldi. Like as in, like I love Aldi. <laughs> it's a grocery store. I just got my groceries delivered from them this morning. You know, think creatively about the, the things that you already consume as a consumer yourself that you love, that you would be a proponent for. And those are probably your best clues as to what kind of sponsors you should be looking for. Love that. Okay. Um, Jill asks, uh, she'd like to know your view about using a free hosting service versus a paid hosting service. Um, I use a paid hosting service. Um, I think it's just worth the money. And, uh, and I have my producers take care of it. So, so um, when I, when I say, you know, when I really, I really mean it when I say, you know, like if your main focus is to make this a really great podcast and you want to be a great podcast host, then, you know, use your time and energy to focus on creating amazing content and outsource the stuff that isn't going to be a great use of your creative energy. Yeah. Um, Kat wants to know, how did you reach out to local media in Charlotte? Ah, um, that is a great question. So uh, local media in Charlotte specifically is really easy. <laughs> it's, um, uh, you know, like it's as simple as, you know, going to each of the media stations and seeing who the executive producers are and reaching out to them via email and doing the same thing we talked about earlier. Hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm an expert in this area. I would love to come on the show and talk about one of these three topics, which is of interest to you, right? So as a, you know, here's actually, here's a good example. This week, I am going to be on Charlotte today on Friday on WCNC and every, you know, whenever I have an idea for a topic, like I will go ahead and preemptively write that segment for them. Like not word for word, like, oh, this, you know, Bernadette says this, and then the host says this, but just giving them a general overview, like here is what I would write and what I would talk about. And they love that because you, again, you've done the work for them. They just have to get it on the teleprompter and maybe change some words around and stuff. But if they don't have to do work, you are more, more likely to get on the show. And specifically, I'm going to tell you in Charlotte, um, uh, WBTV, always looking for people on for their morning shows and their evening shows. And um, WCNC, where I, I go on a lot, um, they, like Charlotte today, hey, you know what? Here, I'll let you practice. If you have a pitch, uh, email me. It's hello at Crush Your Money Goals. I will pass it on. I will pass it on to the producer there. There you go. How can you pass that up? And I have to vouch as well. WBTV is a, a great partner of ours, as is WFAE. And, and they're just, you know, a, a great example of a local network that really invests in uh, shining a light on creativity and the creative uh, uh, creativity in the Charlotte community. So um, that's a that's a great example. Um, Bernadette, we're sort of out of time, believe it or not. It kind of flew by, um, but thank you so much. Any final thing you want to say before I wrap up with the with our closing comments here? I just want to say thank you all for coming. For those of you who are watching on the recording, hello, and thank you for watching the recording as well. I am so rooting for you on your podcasting journey and your money journey. So if you want to uh, continue the conversation, you can reach me at hello at crushyourmoneygoals.com or at Bernadette Joy on social media. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bernadette Joy, for sharing your wisdom and your insight with all of us today. And of course, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Ortho Carolina, and our partners, Blumenthal Performing Arts, Eclex Creative Agency, and the Queen City Podcast Network. Looking at you, Balto. Uh, folks, we mentioned it earlier. Coming up next at one o'clock, that's in two minutes, it's the Pitch Your Podcast to the Pros session. And this is a session in which you can pitch your podcast for instant feedback from a panel of seasoned audio professionals like Balto and Liz Kelly Nelson from Vox.com and folks like that. I mean, um, really, it's going to be an awesome session. So that's, uh, that's happening in about, uh, about two minutes here. Uh, it's going to be moderated by my creative co-conspirator, the uh, other uh, co-founder at Charlotte's Creative, Tim Miner. Again, I've been, uh, I'm Matt Olin. I've been your host today. And uh, thank you again for joining us on how to leverage podcasting to build a six-figure business and a seven-figure net worth with the one and only Bernadette Joy. Thank you, Bernadette, and enjoy the rest of the festival, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>